what's up how's it going it's uh squeaky clean air um squeaky clean and i'm in the process of bagging this jenny and uh today we're going to do a small little vlog on how i run the lines a lot of uh, people ask me um, how would you run lines you know when you want to do the installation of an air suspension setup by yourself i mean there's many ways to run lines some people run it inside uh through panels and stuff like that i don't personally like to run the main lines to the individual um, sides inside. I like to run everything outside, so it's just easy access. So if you need, you know, you need access to the line, um, you can just remove the rear wheel and inspect everything. So you don't have to remove your interior panels. Uh, there's no right or wrong way of doing it. Keep in mind that when you do use like a legit legitimate kit, for example, like an airlift air suspension kit, uh, most of the airlift air suspension kits, well, all the air, air suspension kits come with dot rated lines. Um, dot rated lines are Department of uh, Transportation rated lines and uh, they're good for you know to be used outside to be used uh, anywhere they're uh, they're resistant to oils and various things right obviously you're not gonna um, you know you're gonna make sure that all your fittings are clean when you're uh, when you're installing airlines and stuff like that and you're gonna make sure that the line is properly cut um, you know there's a million tutorials on how to uh, get the lines ready for uh, for insertion into into fittings uh, if not I'm gonna make one as well but uh, the point is is that you need to run really good quality lines and then you'll be able to actually run everything outside so just a little glimpse on how I do stuff on some of the installations that might help you out all right so a lot of really new vehicles some of the newer vehicles yeah, I apologize for that um, the <sighs> cover moved away have little side vents over here uh, they'll go from inside the trunk uh, into the uh, behind the bumper they're usually located on the side of the trunk uh, on both sides. It's a very, very good way to route the lines. Literally just feed the lines right through. Um, there really isn't water that goes in there, so you don't really have to worry about too much uh, of water seeping through. So uh, plus the little rubber flaps that are there as well. So we find that it's very easy to route the lines out. Um, if you don't have any of the side vents or if only one side has a vent, I would not recommend to feed both lines for both sides through that one vent. It's actually better to drill small little holes and put little uh, rubber grommets to feed the lines. You always have to make sure that whenever you're running lines, um, lines are somewhat equidistant. Um, one, for example, front left or front right can't be larger or longer than the other. So it's not uh, advisable to be fitting both lines, for example, with one vent if you only have one vent on the side, right? Uh, the Genesis in this case has two identical vents like that on both sides. So it makes it very easy to route the lines uh, from the trunk inside uh, from the inside of the trunk obviously to the outside and running uh, inside the wheel well which is what I'm going to demonstrate uh, sh in, in a second and here inside there is the vent that leads right inside the actual trunk so running it from the vent through here all along here in the wheel well and then going right underneath the side skirt then I ran it underneath the side skirt and then I ran it right underneath the side skirts all the way through to the front as you can see over here and I'm gonna run it behind the wheel well over here and right into the bag uh, we haven't got to that stage yet but we'll get to there so basically very easy uh, take the vent take the line line right from the inside of the trunk through the vent um, all along the wheel well right here Obviously you need to remove any kind of covers or anything like that in order to access this. Uh, one retainer uh, self-topper in here, another retainer self-topper in here, all along, away from uh, from the wheels or anything like that, behind the uh, brake lines and going right through into the side skirt. Very simple. I'll show you guys in a second what kind of a retainer I use, or I like to use to mount uh, airlines. Okay, so this is one of the retainers that I like to use. This in particular one is for a quarter inch line and as you can see it has like a nice rubber um, shielding over here which uh, which makes it very very easy, come on out of zoom I hate it, which makes it very very easy to put the line through and the line is not going to um, is not going to rapture so it's going to hold it very securely. Don't tighten it too too hard but I like to mount my lines using these guys and then I just put the uh, self topper right through through the hole and um, these uh, basically look like this once they're mounted. And then I usually just put a nice coat of uh, black paint, rust resistant paint, in order to make sure that these don't rust. 
Okay, so as you guys can see here, um, initially we uh, ran the line underneath the side skirt. So I routed it behind the shield, um, all the way here, all along the perimeter. Just one little screw in there with uh, one of the holders going in here. And there's always a little loop like this that you guys should always have. The reason why you want to keep a little bit of a loop underneath the bag, here's a better picture of everything is because as the car goes up and down, you want to be able to have that slack. You want to be able to have that slack of the line, right? Of the airline, so it doesn't get, uh, doesn't get uh, jammed anywhere. And also it gives you the ability for, for the bag to go up and down. Because remember, this whole assembly is going to be going down. So you don't want to be, uh, you don't want to have a situation where when the assembly goes down, it pulls on the line too much and uh, when it expands it doesn't have enough so always leave like a nice little slack a nice little loop like this which always also allows it to uh, pivot around the strut around the air strut like this and like that so always leave a slack like that and attach it to the fitting and always use route the fitting behind so it doesn't get cut up in any of the wheels or anything like that so this is a nice clean way of routing a line i know a lot of people recommend uh, that you can use um, braided lines. To be honest with you, if you don't route a braided line, regardless, even if it's a reinforced line properly, it'll still get cut. And what will happen is we'll literally spin around uh, the strut all around here, which is a common uh, issue uh, with airlift actually, where the line actually spins around. Um, let me just put it here. Spins around the strut like that round and round because over time as you're turning it'll go around so you want to avoid that so regardless if you have a braided line or if you don't have a braided line the routing of the actual airline is very important so um, I've been not using braided lines for a very very long time because I make sure that I always check my lines I always rotate the strut back and forth um, you know in and out just like that basically on the hoist um, you know, see how it's going to turn. And this one in particular, I can't because um, I think it's power steering, but I always check it. And uh, that way I know that the lines are routed, routed, routed properly. Okay. 